Okay, hey guys, I got the machine in the garage now. I had to remove the roof because it just couldn't fit here with the roof on. I'm probably gonna try to do some kind of uh, setup where I can just kind of let the roof slide back when I wanna park it inside. Uh, but for now, I just kind of removed it. Uh, here's a list of things that I'm planning to do on this machine. Starting off with the engine oil. Um, there was, I think there was a lot of water inside the engine oil because the engine oil looked very greyish uh, and yeah, very, very funky looking engine oil. So I'm guessing that white smoke was because there was uh, water inside the engine oil. Uh, you might think maybe it's a blown head gasket and it's leaking coolant into the engine, but actually I think that's not the case because um, the coolant level or the water level here is completely full so I don't think it's uh, the coolant that is leaking into the engine hopefully because that would mean I need to take the head off and yeah that's that's a lot of work uh, anyway what I'm planning to do right now I'm gonna change out the oil I let it drain overnight and I'm gonna put new oil in it but I'm not gonna change the filter it's just that then I'm gonna run it for about one hour or so uh, and then I'm gonna do another oil change uh, to kind of flush the system out a bit and uh, then I'm gonna put a new fil filter on it uh, but yeah I don't really understand what this is for this should be a coolant box but but it's not hooked to anything so this is the coolant line it's coming from the radiator it goes to the engine and it goes back to the radiator from here so i'm guessing this is the coolant system but what is this i don't understand why is this here and why is this blocked off this is this is kind of weird i'm not sure Okay, well, let's get to work, I guess. I also opened up these final drives. They are completely bone dry, which is a big, big no-no. Uh, but I think this machine has been mostly just sitting and sitting for years and years. I don't think this has been doing a lot of work. So uh, hopefully the final drives are not kind of funky. I mean, they seem to be working fine, but yeah. No, no oil in them will gonna ruin ruin them fast. Glad I didn't really operate this machine for very long, only like ten minutes or so. Uh, there is still some kind of clunky oil in there, but uh, it's all very thick and very nasty looking and smelling. But I'm gonna put some new oil in here. I got, already got some gear, gear oil transmission and differential fluid oil this should be pretty decent for this application uh, also I'd like to check uh, there should be a, some kind of uh, swing uh, swing motor lubrication um, deal I've heard so I guess I have to kind of take a lot, of, a lot of this crap off and go under here and see what I can find Yeah, I think I got a bit burned on this pie, but I don't really care. I wanted a Yanmar, so I got a Yanmar. And it's kind of working, yeah, but hopefully we can get her nicely fixed up and stuff. I also noticed that this, this cylinder has some rust on it, so... I'm not planning to use this cylinder anyway, so I'm probably just going to leave it as it is. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, it's pretty nice. The only thing that uh, was picture perf perfect on it was the hydraulic oil. It's uh, right on uh, on the spot here, and it was golden, golden looking. So hydraulic oil is the best oil in this machine by far. Everything else is junk. Hopefully we can do something about that. Okay, well, let's get to work.
Yeah, I'm gonna add a bit more. I'm gonna start the engine now with the new oil in it. Okay, I think uh, the starter motor just gave up on me. Uh, that's my first clue because this battery had a voltage of about 12.3 uh, or 12.4 volts. Currently, currently it's charging. I'm gonna let it charge for a couple of hours, then I'm gonna try again. But I smelt a little bit of burnings, uh, burning smell coming from the engine somewhere. So I'm thinking the I'm thinking the starter motor is uh, dead, and I need to remove that. Uh, I'm not really surprised, considering uh, when I cranked uh, the key, it starts starts up very very slowly and then kind of builds up momentum. So I'm, I'm thinking the dry motor is dead, so I need to replace that. But while I do, while I wait for the battery to charge, I'm gonna. Uh, add the fluid for the final drives. I can't really, uh, can't really move the machine right now, but uh, it's okay, I think. Uh, I looked online, and I need uh, the oil level needs to be on the half here. So I'm gonna open up the center pole, center hole, and start adding oil from this hole until it stop starts dripping out of this hole. So that should get it uh, nice. And then we'll take it from here. Also, this roller is completely dead. Need to do something about that also. Okay. So basically, I'm just gonna start adding this oil until it gonna comes out of this hole. Pretty sure that's how it's supposed to work. starter does anything nope absolutely nothing kind of makes weird weird sounds and doesn't turn the engine even over I can probably get to it from here. The starter motor is right here. <sighs> okay, I'm probably gonna just diagnose the starter motor, see if it turns over or anything. But I'm pretty sure it's the starter motor that is 
broken. Also, this channel is kind of first time I'm actually kind of using it. <laughs> Crazy. I built this, uh, I think, like two years ago now, and this is the first time actually I'm using it, and uh, very glad to use it finally. As you can see, it started up uh, a lot nicer than before. Uh, the engine sound, sound is pretty decent, I think. Also, there's not uh, really any uh, excessive uh, smoke coming from the uh, exhaust. And uh, after changing the oil, the blow-by, there is uh, almost no blow-by right now, but I'm gonna change the oil at least one more time. So, I think, uh, I think the engine is fine, just needed the uh, oil change badly. Okay, right now I'm just gonna start to look where, where I can access the uh, swing uh, bearing motor assembly. Uh, I've heard that there, there is some kind of grease, uh, grease option there, so I want to look at that now. Okay, I couldn't really find any option to grease the swing uh, gear in, in the undergarage. So, only way I, I could access this from uh, here, uh, up. Through this plate, actually behind this plate, there is the swing, swing gear, uh, and uh, there was a lot of grease there. But it was all old and crap. I mean, this is an example. The right one is a new grease, and left one is old grease. So yeah, I just added that there. So the swing gear is nicely greased now. <sighs> what I also noticed, <laughs> these uh, roll rollers. I mean, they are all just destroyed. There is no, no bearing left here on any of these rollers. So I need to get one, two, three, four rollers. And I'm pretty sure these are also destroyed. That's eight new rollers also. Addition to the oil filter and whatnot. I also did some uh, fitting uh, greasing here, but about 80% of the fittings did not accept any grease. So this still needs a lot of work, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, so uh, I've been working on these grease fittings now. And I was like, why wouldn't this uh, fitting take any grease in it? I mean, uh, I, I checked the grease fitting itself, it's, it's working fine. It's letting uh, grease too, but... Yeah, I just kind of removed this, but... Where is this even supposed to go? I mean, th there's no exit hole here. Either I'm blind, or there is literally no exit hole here for the grease. So that is very interesting. Why why is there a grease fitting here if there's no exit hole in the center here? This is just uh, just normal round stock to be honest. There is no exit here. So that is this is very interesting. Overall the bushing uh, bushings actually look pretty good considering the age of the machine. So I'm just going to one by one uh, kind of just grease them. Uh, by hand and uh, then I'm gonna reinstall them. I'm not gonna make any uh, grease holes here because uh, first it will weaken, weaken the stock and uh, that's not good if it breaks it can bend one of these ears and I, I, I assume that's not, not a very good plan. So I'm just gonna try to fit them with hand.
Okay, here's the situation on the greasing options. Um, I three three uh, nipples will not accept any grease. Uh, one is uh, this one here, and the third one. Uh, everything else is nicely greased here. Uh, the second one is here. This will not take any grease in also. And the third one is here. Uh, there is no nipple here. Um, and uh, the hole is too too small for a uh, M10 and too big for a uh, M8. And I don't have any M9 uh, grease nipples or anything like that. So if I can't find any of those, then I need to take the cylinder off. So basically, the, other than that, uh, everything is nicely greased. I also started with the thumb build here, just to attack at some plates here. And gonna use this um, C section as my primary thumb. And I'm gonna weld some sides here to make it a bit longer. Uh, I have this very thick steel plate that um, I'm gonna drill a hole through here, I'm gonna try at least uh, with this hole saw and then I'm gonna cut the edges off and then I'm gonna try to weld this this thick plate there to be my primary um, yeah uh, the locking pins that I'm gonna use are these I just uh, got them they were re relatively cheap around seven seven bucks each uh, yeah, other than that, I got some, the fuel looks really nasty in there, um, but uh, I'm not going to drain it out, I'm just going to add some fresh fuel on top, and also this this thing, uh, this is a fuel additive for uh, uh, diesel, um, should actually fix the quality of the fuel, but I'm not sure, I'm sure it's not bad. So, I'm gonna add some fuel now. Nicely full now. Okay, I got the throttle, throttle lever working now. I think it should work fine. So, where I'm at right now is that uh, I can't really do anything about the track rollers. I'm gonna make a separate video about that. That's pretty huge job actually. And maybe I'm gonna wait until I, I have the rubber tracks also. So I'm gonna do a one one big switch. I'm gonna switch out all the track rollers, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna also change the tracks to rubber, because all of these track rollers they are all dead, uh, and I think it doesn't really hurt any longer if I keep using the machine as is. But uh, for undercarriage, I need eight uh, bottom drag rollers, two uh, top, uh, new sprockets on both sides, and uh, rubber rubber drags. So I'm gonna make a separate video about that. But uh, until I do that, I think I can still use this machine. Uh, I mean, if the rollers break, I don't care. They are already they are already broken. So. I don't think I can really damage anything else here.
Okay, well, I think I got everything pretty much finished. Uh, made a pretty solid thumb, I think. Mm, everything is uh, currently just uh, kind of tack welded into place. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna start welding, welding it shut now and uh, then it should be pretty much finished, I think. Got my three holes here to adjust the thumb, uh, thumb's position uh, and uh, everything else is pretty, pretty solid. Especially like these very thick blocks here that I'm gonna build on the frame. I think uh, they will, they will be pretty solid. But uh, just for name and search, uh, let's see if we can, uh, if nothing is interfering with the thumb. I really like how this machine now fires up after I fiddled with the starter a bit. Uh, this is a gold start by the way, so let's see. Yeah, that's a lot better. I think this is pretty pretty nice uh, position right here. So um, I should probably take the, the thumb off right now and see if uh, if I have anything interfering with the frame parts. I'm gonna do that right now. anything which is very good nice and the other one is I believe this one and yeah it's not hitting anything so it's safe to weld everything on now I really like how smooth this machine is There is uh, hardly any play in, in anything really, or maybe a slight play, but but for a for a, this old machine, I think this is pretty pretty decent. Okay, so I think I got most of the maintenance done on this machine that I wanted to do it on batch one, basically. Uh, the patch 2 will be the undergarage, uh, all the rollers, uh, including the top rollers, need to be changed out uh, and also the sprockets on both sides. Uh, I flushed all the fluids out, added some uh, gear, gear fluids uh, on the final drives and uh, I think it, yeah, I did the lighting, lightning, lighting jobs also, now I have Nice LED, LED lights and looks pretty solid to be, to be honest. Also the engine starts up very nicely. So the oil in the oil right now looks pretty pretty decent I think. 
Uh, it looks golden colored right now. I have changed the oil twice. Uh, after I changed it the first time, it uh, it turned gray pretty fast again. But right now it's uh, it's it stayed uh, golden for about an, an hour. Uh, actually, about 30 minutes uh, that it took me to take this stump out. But I got the engine up to warming to working temperature. There are a couple of things that I don't really understand here. Uh, first, the radiator. Uh, there should be a hose that comes off this and then uh, enters this area. I think this is some kind of overflow st stuff or something. But uh, this looks uh, kind of melted and yeah, it's not really working right now. So maybe maybe someone in the comments can kind of explain uh, what uh, what's going on here. There is a hose missing here, to my knowledge. I've seen pictures where there's a hose that comes from this and uh, then enters this and then a ble bleeder valve also here uh, but this is empty and yeah uh, the other thing is that uh, the the ventilation that came from here uh, la on the last video i thought it, it came from the crankcase but it, it actually comes from up here uh, right now there is very little ventilation i think Let's see. So the engine is, engine is currently in operating temperature, so it shouldn't have this uh, this uh, vapor coming from the head right now so i don't really understand is there moisture in here or something the moisture should be gone actually because the engine is at the operating temperatures right now uh, inside here it looks clean there's really no no slush or anything on the cap here uh, but you can see there is some uh, some vape coming from here and this vape is exiting through this hose so I don't really understand what what that what's that about. But at least it's clean. That's that's very good. Also, when I ran the engine, I looked inside the uh, uh, reservoir here. Uh, I re read that if there is a gasket leak, uh, there should be bubbles here uh, in the radiator fluid but uh, there are none so that's a plus side uh, also this gap there's there are two gaps on this oil gaps there was slight slight amounts of uh, uh, sludge on this uh, but but none has warned right now the, in the one hour that I have operated this engine uh, this uh, what is left here this is the from the last cleaning job I didn't do a proper cleaning of this cap but uh, this is very little sludge but uh, I guess I need to run the engine a bit longer to kind of kind of make uh, make up my mind if the head gasket is blown or not uh, if it is even blown I don't really care I'm gonna order the, order the gasket and make a video about it but I'm gonna operate the machine a bit longer before I actually do that <sighs> so I also replaced the coolant I put green coolant in it this time uh, the coolant that came out of here was clear uh, it was slightly green but it was clean uh, and clear the, the most important thing is that it was clean it was not contaminated with oil or anything so that's another plus side uh, other than that uh, nothing really here everything seems to be working fine on this end um, so basically i think that's it uh, i'm so sad that i cannot put put the roof on because i don't want to park this machine outside i, I have a place for it but uh, it cannot fit through the building so i can't put the roof on just yet until i basically build a place for it and i'm planning to do that next year in the uh, close to the summer time, so maybe I will make a video about that also.
Mm, okay, uh, I did notice that this cylinder started leaking. So this leak started after I got the machine. It was not leaking before because there was uh, rust here and there was uh, rust here and if this cylinder leaks there shouldn't be any rust here or here. So I'm pretty sure this cylinder started leaking after I got the machine and it just, just barely kind of drips out very slowly. I'm not gonna do anything to it right now uh, but in the future I probably need to take this cylinder uh, apart and uh, reseal it because the rod itself looks very nice. Uh, I think the seals are just worn out. And also I got this working. Uh, actually, I don't know, it just kind of started working on its own. But uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Oh yeah, the thumb peeled also, the thumb kind of came out like this. I think it's pretty solid thumb. I had all the mesh, I had all the steel on hand, so I didn't really wasted that amount of money on it. Only thing I did buy was these, because I didn't really bother to make them. And they were only like <laughs> like four four bucks a piece, so uh, no, the, no big problems there. And I especially like these uh, thick blocks that I welded on here. I think this will be stronger than even whatever is on that side, so this should not ne never break. Uh, this is a bit iffy, but but I think it will be fine. So I will go start the ATV now. Gonna get the ATV trailer out and uh, gonna lift this on the ATV trailer and then I'm gonna end this video because this video is kinda long. And uh, hopefully we'll see a uh, part two in about two or three months uh, when I'm gonna be dealing with the undercarriage. Yeah, that's that's gonna be expensive, but I don't really care. At least I have a Yanmar, that's all I really care about. Okay, thank you for watching and yeah, have a good one. So this, this boy is still sitting here. If I can't sell it, I'm just gonna keep it. Uh, I mean, I can go to places with this that I cannot go with the excavator. This, this can be really in a sticky location and it would be a very good machine. But if I can sell it for the price that I want, then, uh, then it's gonna go. Right now I just need this trailer. Uh, this is something cool right here. This is not mine, but uh, uh, apparently it should work, it just need a, needs a starter, but it, it hasn't run for about uh, 
I'm thinking like 10 years or more also a smaller one here I'm not really sure what they are called some call, some some call them like ish ish or something like that and that's that's uh, some kind of moped hopefully we will get these running soon also <laughs> but yeah right now I just need the trailer hard to do with one hand I'm gonna try anyway Okay, so this was a little bonus video. This video is very long anyway, so what the, what the hell. But uh, glad the ATV started up. I probably haven't moved that in about two months or so. And thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Maybe I'm gonna do an upgrade on this trailer. It's been a really good trailer, but um, I wanna do a small upgrade to it. Namely, I want to make sure that the plywood board here is over the top of this steel. Uh, that's been annoying. And I also want to uh, add a hand winch here to uh, lift the bucket up because I need to take the uh, bed closer because it's too far off. And if I put too much weight on the rear, then my ATV will lift up and that's not good. But okay, thanks for watching and... Have a good one.